In Part 3 of Warning Systems, we will discuss the 747-400 Ground Proximity Warning System. The Ground Proximity Warning System has seven modes of operation. Mode 1, Excessive Descent Rate. Mode 2, Excessive Terrain Closure Rate. Mode 3, Altitude Loss After Takeoff or Go-Around. Mode 4, unsafe terrain clearance while not in the landing configuration. Mode 5, deviation below glide slope. Mode 6, altitude advisories. And Mode 7, wind shear. The ground proximity warning system will not warn of flight toward vertically shear terrain. However, Atlas is beginning to configure their 400 fleet with enhanced GPWS. This system has a worldwide terrain database which should assist the crew in avoiding vertically shear terrain. The ground proximity warning system will not warn of shallow descents when the airplane is in the landing configuration. The ground proximity controls consist of the glide slope inhibit switch, the ground proximity flap override switch, and the ground proximity configuration gear override switch. The switches are located on the first officer's panel. Alerts for all modes of the ground proximity warning system, or GPWS, include a GPWS voice enunciation. In addition, for some alerts, the master warning lights illuminate and the ground proximity light illuminates or a GPWS message is displayed on the primary flight display. Question. Answer B is correct. The ground proximity warning system cannot alert the crew of flight toward structures or steep terrain. Now let's look at mode one of the GPWS, excessive and severe barometric descent rates. When an excessive rate of descent is first detected, a sink rate oral caution sounds. Sink rate and the ground proximity light illuminates. The caution continues as long as the excessive descent rate continues. The excessive descent rate becomes severe. The caution changes to a warning. The pull-up oral warning sounds. Oh, ah. The ground proximity light extinguishes the master warning lights illuminate, and a red pull-up message is displayed on both PFDs. As the descent rate decreases, the pull-up oral warning changes back to a sink rate oral caution. The ground proximity light illuminates, the master warning lights extinguish, and the red pull-up message is no longer displayed. Sink rate. Sink rate. Now, let's look at Mode 2, Excessive Terrain Closure Rate. When an excessive terrain closure rate is detected, a terrain oral caution sounds. Terrain. And the ground proximity light illuminates. If the excessive terrain closure rate continues after the terrain oral caution sounds twice, the caution changes to a warning. The pull-up oral warning sounds. Terrain. Terrain. Oh, ah. The ground proximity light extinguishes. The master warning lights illuminate, 
and a red pull-up message is displayed on both PFDs. Let's discuss Ground Proximity Warning System Mode 3, which is altitude loss after takeoff or go-around. When an excessive altitude loss is detected during takeoff or during go-around, the don't sink oral caution sounds, don't sink, and the ground proximity light illuminates. Question. Answer A is correct. The oral caution, don't sink, alerts the crew to an altitude loss after takeoff or go around. Don't sink. Next, we will discuss Mode 4, unsafe terrain clearance while not in the landing configuration. When an unsafe terrain clearance is detected at high airspeed, a too low terrain oral caution sounds. Too low terrain. And the ground proximity light illuminates. When an unsafe terrain clearance is detected at low airspeed with the landing gear lever up, the Mode 4 Too Low Gear Oral Caution sounds. Too Low Gear. And the Ground Proximity Light illuminates. The airplane must land without all gear extended. Pushing the Ground Proximity Configuration Gear Override Switch inhibits the Mode 4 Too Low Gear Caution. An unsafe terrain clearance is detected at low airspeed with landing gear lever down but flaps not in a landing position. The Mode 4 oral caution, too low flaps, sounds. Too low flaps. And the ground proximity light illuminates. If the airplane must land with less than landing flaps, Pushing the ground proximity flap override switch inhibits the Mode 4 too low flaps caution. Question. Answer B is correct. Answer B is correct. The too low flaps oral caution is inhibited when the ground proximity flap override switch is pushed. Now we will discuss mode 5, deviation below glide slope. If an excessive deviation below glide slope is detected, a glide slope oral caution sounds. Glide slope. The oral caution initially is only one half the volume of other orals. The ground proximity light also illuminates. As the radio altitude decreases, and the glide slope deviation increases, 
the oral caution repetition rate increases and the volume increases to full volume. Light flow. Pushing the glide slope inhibit switch cancels or inhibits the mode 5 alerts. Question. Answer C is correct. Answer C is correct. The glide slope oral caution can be inhibited by pushing the glide slope inhibit switch. Let's now take a look at the landing advisories of Mode 6. The radio altitude orals are 100, 50, 30, Now, let's look at Mode 7, Wind Shear. Mode 7 alerts the flight crew that excessive downdrafts or tailwinds have been encountered. Mode 7 alerts can occur any time after rotation on takeoff and any time airplane radio altitude is below 1,500 feet. When the wind shear condition is encountered, a two-tone siren is activated, followed by an oral warning. Wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. The master warning lights illuminate, and the GPWS red message, wind shear, is displayed on both pilots' PFDs. During a wind shear alert, all other ground proximity modes are inhibited. The inhibit continues until the wind shear alert deactivates. <laughs>